Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. My name is Bliss Foster. Welcome to the analysis of Rick Owens' Fall Winter 2021 Menswear Gethsemane. These are very special episodes. This is one of a few different episodes I've done where I let my audience actually analyze the shows themselves. So basically on my Instagram and on my Twitter, I've posted a few looks from the runway show per day along with resources and other things to kind of help you reach conclusions about the show. And then people send me DMs with their own analysis and I compile gosh, hundreds of these comments into a single video. And that is this video here. References, symbolism, general thoughts, insider stories, everything gets pushed into these videos. These are some of my favorite ones to make. I'm really honored to be able to bring this kind of stuff to you. If this is something that you personally enjoy, if you engaged in this series, or if doing something like this sounds appealing to you, you should consider joining the private Discord server. It's one of the perks to joining my Patreon, but it's full of very plugged in, smarter people than me just talking about clothes all day. It's like a massive group chat for people that are serious fashion fans. I often say, and I mean this, that it's the best fashion community on the internet. Click the link. Okay, so this is actually a pretty different episode than even the other group analyses that I've done before. At, at the other ones, like for Vetma, it was pretty different because everybody was sending me mostly symbolism things. But this is a really different episode because there aren't specific reference points. Rick has talked a lot about how a lot of his designs are not very literal things, and this show is a very unliteral one. So I'm delighted to say that this is going to be a really different kind of group analysis. Less like A to B to C and more just kind of pontificating generally about this collection, which I think is a healthy thing for us to do together as a group because it can kind of help lead all of us into better thought processes about how to look at art and fashion and everything else generally. Okay, no more waffling. I respect your time, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna begin with a quote from somebody who submitted a great comment here. I'm just gonna quote it verbatim here. It says, this show pulls together the Rick Owens universe very neatly and feels closer to what the Rick aesthetic looks like from fit pics that you see on the gram to people spotted at Fashion Week. The camera shot flipping to the roadside gives me the impression that, yeah, this is what it looks like when you spot a guy wearing Rick walking down the street. And Rick reiterated that a whole lot in the interview that he gave with Vogue Runway right after the show, where he was saying that he was going much more for a, uh, a wearable thing that all guys can just put on and wear. He was going for much uh, less of the exclusive, ultra, like tight fitting stuff that can be really difficult for guys to fit into. I know there's a lot of Rick stuff that I don't fit into just because my shoulders are too wide. And he was trying to, at least for the moment, kind of do away with that and make this a much more wearable thing. And even the styling of the looks themselves, I agree, was much more of a uh, Rick Owens fan base kind of collection rather than one that was like a lot of other Rick collections in the past. Someone pointed out a really cool thing that the, the show features the song Hell Rap by Ghost Mane. And uh, someone said that uh, Gethsemane and Ghost Mane uh, there's a wordplay there, I think. It's like not an out loud wordplay, which is how most wordplays work. It just looks very similar when you write them out. A really huge element of the show is that Rick is referencing himself. A lot of you pointed me towards this post that was made by Geocasket and at Subhuman Superhuman, where they broke down the comparisons between this current Rick show and Rick shows in the past. And you can see a lot of uh, interesting twists there that he's done on his previous work. And Rick has actually talked about this in other interviews before. By the way, if you ever want to actually look through all of the Rick interviews, he has them all listed on his website. Like if you just Google Rick Owens interviews, it has like a webpage where all of them are kept in a single place, which is quite handy. But anyway, when he starts the design process for a new collection, he's talked about how he'll hit up his factory and have them send him previous looks from other shows in muslin, which is just a basic drapery fabric. It's very basic, it's always white. And from there he'll, rip things off or he'll kind of pin things up and he'll kind of start his process off by looking into the past but carrying it forward in a new way. Both of these accounts do a really great job. A link to them is in the description. You should check them out. The biggest aesthetic difference with this show was the iteration of the kiss boots that we saw here. I mean, Rick has done this before with other stuff with like the Ramones and the Geo Baskets and stuff where he'll take something that he's previously only done in like a monochrome and then he'll change it up and start to do more organic colors. So I think we all knew that some new version of the Kiss Boots was going to come, but I don't think any of us were expecting green fuzzy Kiss Boots. So surrealistic and crazy, I love them. The best single comment about these was the person that said, Mr. Tumnus from Chronicles of Narnia type beat. We had a really, really good comment that I'm just, again, I'm gonna quote directly. It said, these boots almost remind me of waiter boots. The feeling of wearing waiter boots 
feels reminiscent of what was said in the WWD interview. When you wear them and are treading through muddy waters or rivers, it's that feeling of resistance and coldness against your body, a feeling that has been prominent throughout the past year. It's also rather discomforting because you're only half experiencing walking through thick water. You feel the coldness and the current, but there's a lack of connectivity between your skin and the dirty water, very dissociating. I might be overreading, but it's that idea of going through something without fully knowing what you're involved in, such as the confusion around the pandemic or not knowing what lies beneath the water that you're standing in. I thought that comment was particularly well put and is a little bit more emblematic of kind of the way that you can treat these Rick Owens shows because there's less of the direct references to things, much more of a of a feeling and like a tone that's being set. And so the mode of interpretation is much more broad. A lot of you pointed out, rightfully I think, that these looks strongly resemble a satyr. And a little bit more on the classical symbolism side of things, people pointed out that this evokes images of Baphomet and others also use the term fawn. We'll start real quick with Baphomet. I think most of those comparisons got made because of the hairy legs, the bare chest, and the pentagram that's featured on the tidy whitey underwear that's shown here. So chic. Because as a symbol, Baphomet was all about opposites, right? Being half human, half beast, half male, half female, clothes on, clothes off. And we see that represented here, where a lot of the looks have the identity of the models hidden by the mask, but then also their torso is completely bare. We see them very strongly resembling half human, half beast, because these boots inherently, especially the ones with the clear heels, it really does look like the person, at least from a side view, has hooves and that the back of their foot is just levitating off of the ground, similar to a horse or an actual satyr. We also see the contrast of very wearable things along with very avant-garde stuff. A lot of those opposites that Baphomet as a symbol represents are shown here in this runway. And one person had a great little comment that says, quote, the crazy stuff like the hairy boots and the pentagram briefs contrasted with the parka gives a casual regular guy aesthetic that to me reads, the devil walks among us. That is a very smart little comment. One viewer also pointed out that the way the boots are structured gives very much the impression of Wild West cowboys wearing their chaps, which they pointed out was an item of clothing mostly made of leather, originally invented by Spanish settlers to protect their legs from thorns and branches of brushes while they rode on their horses. And with all of the talk about male aggression and manliness in the show notes, what, what better symbol for manliness is there other than American cowboys? And okay, going back to the boxer briefs, a lot of people I think looked at that and were just kind of like, oh, this is slightly goofy, very like sexed up and it's kind of vaguely satanic. So like it's Rick Owens, what else is new? But one person reached out to me and made the really cool comment that he was like, I don't think this is a satanic pentagram. I think it's a pentagram that's used in an astrological way to be the sign of Venus. And they supported that by saying it has to be because it's vaguely sexual, it's over the genitals. Now, I love that comment. I think that's incredibly smart. I will say though that Rick has used a lot of vaguely satanic things in the past because I think he just grew up in scenes where this stuff was so prevalent that it's kind of part of the DNA of the background of his life. But I do think that there is a pretty nice extra step here that kind of complicates that symbol in this case. And I, I, I don't have any way to argue with it. It being over the crotch area makes it where this is a really compelling case for uh, it being the pentagram of Venus rather than just an old classic uh, metal Satanist one. Moving around a little bit more, this was a particular look that confused a lot of people and someone pointed out very aptly that this was a style of sleeve that was popular in the 14th through 17th centuries where there would be a slit part of the way up the sleeve so that women could have very long sleeves but they still be able to use their hands. It was often lined with fur so it was kind of luxurious and stuff but I feel like this is one where we looked at it and had Two questions, one is, oh, that's interesting, the sleeve is open, and then also, is he holding something? And no, he was not holding anything. Moving on to these sweaters that have holes in them and uh, a lot of the knitwear just in general, someone said, uh, Rick said to Women's Wear Daily, it's inauguration week, and I was thinking about how this collection was conceived during a very dark period, even though it's a very optimistic moment, and I'm basically an optimist. End of Rick quote, continuing with their quote, and there was the sweater that had multiple openings as a means of wearing it in multiple fashions. To me, it says that this optimism he speaks of, an opportunity for people to be flexible in a time of complexity and trauma, he gives the wearer the opportunity to think of change. This optimism being linked to the way in which people can change the way that they're living, uh, being optimistic in that they can do for themselves when they're given the resources. A lot of people also pointed out that uh, this show being very biblical in its nature, 
Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, the Garden of Gethsemane is where Jesus prayed and went through this agony and was arrested the night before his crucifixion. So symbolically, it often gets talked about as this kind of calm before the storm kind of place. So with those biblical references kind of already present, a lot of people pointed out that in the knitwear where there's these uh, circles that have been placed there, these openings in the sweater on the torso that those could likely be interpreted as places where Jesus was stabbed on the cross by the spear. This is specifically mentioned in the Gospel of John, which is part of the New Testament, where it says, quote, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a lance and immediately there came blood and water. Obviously, that's not enough information for us to be able to determine exactly where Jesus was pierced on his torso, but a lot of the depictions do show it to correspond to the place where the holes in these sweaters are. Pretty gruesome. Another reference to the crucifixion that someone pointed out is that these uh, things that are over their torsos, these kind of oversized skirts that are used as a layering piece, could possibly correspond to the uh, cloth that Jesus had tied around his waist during the crucifixion. In a totally unrelated comment, someone pointed out that these do fairly closely resemble the alphabet T's that were made by Hiroika Oya. And finally, a registered nurse pointed out that this could also be called the colostomy bag sweater. I love you all so much. <laughs> Running back to the beginning of the show, we have something that seems to be a coincidence, but I don't actually think that it is. So at the very beginning of the show, we see a white Mustang in the background that someone made a comparison to the white horse of the apocalypse in Revelation. There's a few mentions of a white horse in the book of Revelation, but I'm going to read the one that Johnny Cash used at the beginning of one of his songs. This is from Revelation 6. And I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. And I saw and behold, a white horse. And I was wondering if maybe this was too much of a stretch, so I just mentioned it offhand to my dad, who's really into film analysis stuff, and he asked me to turn it on and show him, and he was like, absolutely not. That is not a coincidence. That was in there on purpose, and it is meant to be symbolic. He pointed out that you start this entire video with a title screen shot, so that's shot number one, and then you have an establishing shot, which is where are we? People are getting ready for a runway show. Tyrone is walking off, and then he said the first shot that is the runway show proper, and that's the third shot in the whole video, features the white horse. So for anybody who thinks it's a coincidence, you're gonna have to talk to my dad. We had another person who pointed out kind of a complication with the mask wearing in this show. Rick has been one of the few designers that has embraced mask wearing during the pandemic. It just honestly fits so well with the runway shows that he's already doing that I don't think it was much of a jump for him to do that, and he said so himself. But someone pointed out that the classically Greek symbol of the mask shows someone whose face and identity is hidden, but that their true character is able to emerge forward from that. And a lot of people also pointed out that Tyrone is the only one who is not wearing a mask. His is pulled down while everyone else is uh, sometimes even covered up with a mask and sunglasses, so their identity is fully covered. And I'm not sure that there's any symbolic reason for that. One person pointed out that it's probably just because Tyrone is Rick's boyfriend and he is kind of the leader of the models and so they wouldn't want him to have his identity hidden while as everyone else is able to kind of keep more in theme with the show. Not that he could hide his identity anyway. I feel like I could probably recognize those ripped dehydrated abs anywhere. I'll quote this next person. They said, since Rick did specify that male aggression is being shown in a major way through the Capitol riots in the United States, there may be a gentle reference to this in the way that the models did the flood, where they all climbed up the steps posing in the smoke. And if that is a direct reference, it's a pretty tiny one, though I don't think that's completely out of reach since the Capitol riots did happen just before this show and a minor change to the blocking of the flood would be something that you could truly add in last minute. By the way, just in case it really bothers anybody that Rick may be making a reference to a conservative riot in one of his runway shows, I think that this isn't so much that Rick is making a value assessment of that. Anybody who's read anything about Rick Owens knows that his political leanings are extremely liberal. I think he's just taking something that is a, uh, you know, still bad, but very newsworthy thing that is a demonstration, a very public demonstration of male aggression. And I think he's trying to sort of encapsulate that as it relates to the themes in the show. Very rarely do artists make these uh, very direct one-to-one -one value assessments of things or events or ideas or people. Usually they're just thinking about stuff. Of course, one of the most discussed things about this runway show was the collaboration with Converse that I don't think any of us saw coming. Someone said something really smart about this, 
And they said, uh, pretty interesting considering the Ramon shoe is such a direct inspiration from the Converse, but that his official collaboration went in such a different direction. One user said that he Bauhaused the Chucks, which I love that comment. That is such a smart way of looking at this. And someone else pointed out that the front of the Converse collaboration looks a lot like the grills that are on the Kiss heels. Okay. I'm gonna quote somebody else here who said of this look, this was my favorite look of the entire collection. It has such an ominous presence. Gave me chills when I first saw it walking down the runway. The only part that exposes the tiniest bit of skin is the tips of the index and thumb, perhaps a nod to the over digital state of the world currently. We protect ourselves from the outside world and our only remaining form of connection to it and others is through the tips of our fingers. That is a way of thinking about things that I aspire to have in all of my thoughts. Very symbolic, dead on, I love that. I'm gonna quote from somebody else here. They said, this season is for sure a tribute to the past. Every look kind of reminds me of old Rick seasons and in a certain way it feels like Rick, like all of us, is looking at the past, good old pre-corona days, and he's feeling nostalgic. So the collection is a consequence of this nostalgic and beautiful love for the past days, but a reaction to the present too. And I think that that comment rings really true because in a recent interview, it was before this collection, but I think it's, it's very relevant here. Rick Owen said, quote, I'm trying to paint as big a picture as is possible. I'm trying to look at this big spectrum instead of just the period that we're living in. How do I think of all of history, all of fashion history, and try to fuse it all together so that it makes something contemporary, but futuristic? And then he jokes at the end and says, that sounds kind of tricky, doesn't it? <laughs> One person pointed out that this looks a lot like the Thneed from the Thorax, like the Thneed from the Thorax, the Thorax. <laughs> <laughs> One person pointed out that this looks suspiciously like the Thneed from the Lorax. I cannot wait for the pronunciation police to come and get me on the pronunciation of Thneed. Bliss, you would actually want to take the Mesopotamian pronunciation of that. It's actually Thneed, like with knee, but with a non-silent K. The person that pointed this out made sure to note that he's like, like, I'm joking, but it does look like it. But this is a joke, I don't actually think that. But going back to the pieces with holes in them, someone pointed out that this had a very bacterial feel to it. They couldn't get any more specific than that, but I thought the comment was still worth throwing in because it's, it is, does have this very bacterial feel to it. We actually had a knitwear professional chime in on these pieces as well, and she gave us some, some excellent thoughts. This is someone who professionally does very technical knitting as her job. She said, this is extremely hard to achieve and would have taken so much skill. Getting a perfect circle hole in a knit is nearly impossible. So it's just to do with the nature of knitting itself. Perfect curves and clean lines are really tough. Knitting is always a bit stretchy, so the knit will warp and change shape from being draped. So one would have to take a bit of growth into account. And then the fact that knits are always pixelated, I think that's the best way to picture it, as each stitch has to be individually cast off to get the circle. So instead of a clean curved line like you get with a woven, you get a gradual shape that increases stitch by stitch. I imagine it took loads of trial and error until they got the perfect clean circle like that. And even the dangly strands on the bottom are all integrally knitted, nothing stitched on after, which is again, time consuming, difficult, and it shows Rick's technical virtuosity. That woman is also on the Discord and she recently did an Ask Me Anything about technical knitwear and it was one of the most enlightening things that I've read in months. Continuing on with those pieces, this was by far one of the most commented things about in the entire show. Someone said, those awkward knitted garments also look incredibly difficult to put on. In doing so, you may feel claustrophobic and stuck in unnatural discomfort, characteristics of having to wear a face mask in public areas. I can definitely attribute to that. When we all first started having to wear face masks, I got one that made of some weird material thing and I almost had a panic attack in a Kroger. That said, masks are still important. And some of the comments have actually been a little bit more on the constructive criticism side of things. One person in particular, said, I've seen some response to the show on the Rick Owens Discord, of which I'm a member, flex. The response was generally that Rick played it very safe, as he said himself. There's also a general consensus that Rick should stop making clothes for Tyrone and start making clothes for himself again. Personally, I think that Tyrone and Rick's relationship has changed, and now instead of just being an inspiration to Rick, Tyrone is now an idol. 
Rick is making clothes for Tyrone because he's feeling older, and Tyrone embodies the bad boy, super ripped rock stars, which Rick used to idolize, and in some ways is what Rick used to be himself. And stuff like that to me is really important. A lot of people tend to just come in with this like, it sucked, end of story, not a very good collection, but it can be just as good if you're able to articulate in great detail why you didn't prefer a certain collection over another one. And that, I mean, I can't argue with it. That's a really well articulated criticism of this show. One final quote that I wanna bring us to to kind of close us out a little bit here is someone who uh, pointed out, quote, so my initial interpretation of the name Gethsemane was that Rick was asserting that we are in a bit of a meditative state currently prior to some kind of societal rebirth. Seeing the show in its old Rick-like dark aggressive feel, it feels more like foreshadowing of some impending wrath, i.e. focus on the cruelty of Jesus' arrest, torture, and execution, as though maybe Rick thinks that things have to get a lot worse before they can get any better. That's a really great point. I enjoyed doing this a lot. Like I said, the show is very different than Vetma or Balenciaga that we've done in the past. This one has been much more abstract. And I think in that way, it pushed all of us to come up with much more um, abstract and uh, a lot more critical thinking was involved instead of just like, oh, I recognize that thing, it's this to this. And as always, kind of the moral of the story that I try to point out by doing these runway show analyses, the group analyses specifically, is that if you take the time and you really study something closely, it will reward you a lot. Having this mile wide but inch deep knowledge of all of fashion, someone who exposes themselves to every single runway show that comes out but doesn't really look much into them, I, I just feel like it's so much more valuable for you to take a single show that you really enjoyed and do a deep dive on that thing. Really sit with it and spend time looking at the thing and drawing your own conclusions with it. So yeah, that's uh, Rick Owens' Gethsemane. I really enjoyed doing this. Uh, we're gonna start doing these runway show group analyses every other month, I think, for the time being. So I'm really looking forward to doing the next one. If you have any suggestions about which one we should do, I would love to hear it. Everybody stay safe. I love you holistically. I'll talk to you soon.